Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. And tonight we're going to be digging in as we continue to go through Psalm 119. We're going to be taking a close look at verses 119 and 120 tonight. So uh, let's uh, go to the Lord and let's pray and uh, then let's get into our study. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for this night. Thank you and praise you for all your blessings um, today, throughout this day, how you kept us safe and and uh, lord how you just dealt with us throughout the day lord we just thank you you are so good you are worthy to be praised and glorified and lifted up dear lord please uh forgive us today of uh, any and all things in our lives that are not like you help us to walk with christ in, in our lives and god i just pray for all those listening in tonight that you would would help them and strengthen them and help them to walk with you each and every day. And Lord God, we pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Okay, well, tonight we're going to be digging in, like I said, Psalm 119. We're going to take a look at verses 119 and 120. So um, last week we were going through this and we started, uh, really we were looking for, starting at verses 113 through 120. But now we're at the end of this this section of uh, Samech, which is uh, one of the, the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Each one of these sections that we uh, look at, there are eight verses here, and they're separated by different uh, Hebrew letters of their alphabet. So it goes all the way through. It's really cool. Anyway, verses 119-120, let's dig in. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore... I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Wow. You know, um, as I was looking this up, let me just tell you, this is, uh, this is a pretty amazing uh, passage of scripture here, verses 119 and 120. And uh, there are some things in this that I, I will tell you tonight we're going to look at, but it's, uh, it's tough, right? Well, sometimes the word of God's tough. So let's look at... Uh, Let's look at verse 119. It says, Thou puttest away. Now, that word, puttest away, um, Hebrew word, it, you know, it means to uh, destroy or to cause to cease, you know, to, to remove. You know, this is uh, puttest away. You know, it means thou puttest away. So it's, um, and it says, All the wicked of the earth, like dross. You know that word dross? That word dross is actually a Hebrew word that, that means refuse or trash, garbage. Like you're putting out the garbage, you're getting rid of it, you're not keeping it. And that's, when you look at that, that first part of that verse, it says, Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. You know, this is what's going to happen. This is why we warn people. This is why you tell people about Jesus, because this is going to happen there's coming a day on the day day of judgment god separates you know the wicked from the just how are you just you know only in christ are you just only in christ do you have righteousness outside of christ you don't it's wickedness and um you know the psalmist says thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross therefore i love thy testimonies see the psalmist knows that god's going to do this so therefore you know, he says, I love thy testimonies. You know, he is, he, he, he commits to loving God's word. Now, there's two, two ways to look at that. There's two ways to look at it. One way to look at that is, you know, the fear of the Lord is, is what's motivating him. In the fact that he's saying, um, therefore, I love thy testimonies, you know. But there's also a secondary part of that where he can be saying as well, um, that this loving his testimonies is is the fact that God is going to judge wickedness. He's going to remove it from this planet. I mean, I don't know about you, but there are um, so many days that you get tired of the the evil that's going on around the world. You know, you get it it wears on you to see um, how many things happen on this world that are so horrible it, mankind do, does this right mankind does this to mankind we we do this um yeah there are um there are storms and 
things where people lose their lives, and that de definitely happens, disease and, and all of this. But it, at the root of it, it's our fault. I mean, we did it. We, we brought death in because of our disobedience to God. But even more than that, um, we see man's wickedness to man, and it, it's played out every day. You know, all you have to do is turn on the news and you can see that. And so there's an end of that, you know. There's an end of all wickedness. There's a day that God will judge the earth. And he's going to make a new heavens and a new earth, you know. So there's a day coming when all of the brokenness of this life will be done. There will be no more. No more sin. No more wickedness. No more evil. No more atrocities. No more... Uh, you know, murders and, 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 and just all the, the abuse that you see on the planet. There'll be no more of that. No more of that. Sin's day will be done. Sin will no more be on this earth. I mean, I, I look forward to that day. I'm thankful that that day is coming. So both the fear of the Lord and the thankfulness that this is not an unending state, that this does have a definite ending date, God, when God is going to judge the world, he, He's going to judge it uh, at a date and a time known to Him, right? Because I'm not about to try to set any dates and time. I don't even know. You know, only the Father knows. So, but the fact that that day will come, the day of the Lord, that will come. The day of His wrath, that will come. So, we know that day is coming. So, Let's take a look at a couple of scriptures that go along with this. Um, first one we're going to look at uh, is Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. Oh, there we go. Okay, praise the Lord. And down to verse 23. Now this is this is Samuel. Uh, and he's talking to Saul. And he says here in verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So this was, this is what the Lord um, had made this decision based on Saul, because Saul uh, was rebellious. You know, he was rebellious, and he was doing his own thing rather than doing what God called him to do. And it's interesting to see what, how God uh, feels about these these things, about rebellion. I mean, he compares rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I mean, so they're uh, they're equal uh, in rebellion and witchcraft. They're on the same level. You know, it's not good. You know, people today there's a uh, there's a lot of people delving into um, witchcraft and Wicca and and all kinds of stuff today. Occultism. Uh, let me tell you. It all ends in destruction. It's all, all of that occultism is run by Satan anyway. Um, Satan is the one who's behind all of that. There's no um, good magic. Uh, there's no difference between white uh, magic or gray or black. It's all the same. It's all witchcraft. It's all occult. It's all derived from Satan. And it's his ploy to deceive you. Wicca, worship of nature. You're worshiping a false god. You know, people... I. I can't stand to hear Christians say Mother Nature. Seriously, do you know what you're saying? You are talking about Gaia, a false, a false goddess, the goddess of the Wiccans, the Druids. You know, they're worshiping nature. You know, don't we don't use the terminology Mother Nature as a Christian? You use the terminology the creation, the creation, because God created it. It wasn't some false goddess. Uh, Mother Nature or Gaia, whoever you want to call it, wasn't her who made uh, anything. It was the Lord God who made heavens and the earth. You can read that in Genesis. Amen? So don't, don't fall into that trap. Because that's a trap. So anyway, he says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness 
is as the iniquity of idolatry. So being stubborn towards towards God, you know, being stubborn here is as the iniquity of uh, is as iniquity and idolatry. So stubbornness and idolatry they go go hand in hand. You know, so maybe it's not a good thing to be, you know, stubborn towards the Lord if He's trying to teach you something. Because maybe it's idolatry. You're worshiping yourself, not worshiping the Lord. Maybe you're holding yourself up and not God. Let's go to Matthew chapter three. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse starting at 11. Actually, let's go to 10 because I think 10 is important. Um, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So did you catch that? Every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So we have something here. Remember, it says, Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross, therefore I love thy testimony. So here we see John the Baptist is telling us, first of all, every tree that doesn't bear good fruit gets cut down and thrown in the fire. Then he says that he baptizes with the water of repentance, but one that comes after him is mightier than him and he's talking about Jesus whose shoes these I'm not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire amen what does fire do it purifies you know it fire when I say purifies it's like when you melt uh, you're melting down metals and as you apply heat to it that metal melts the the contaminants they float to the surface and they get skimmed off of the metal you know off of that molten metal so uh, fire is, is really where you and I uh, need to be placed many times. Fire, trials, fire, you know, the fire of, of persecution, the fire of, of all of these things, tribulation. Because what it causes is those impurities in your life and my life to come to the surface where God skimmed those things off. It's repentance, you know, repentance. You do this through repentance. Lord, please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for the wickedness of my of my actions, my thoughts, my my conduct. Um, please forgive me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You know, as as these as trials, persecution, tribulation comes into your life, that pressure, that fire that's, that's brought to bear on your life, will purify you. Will take those things that are not like Christ, and and you can repent and you can ask God to forgive you, you know. And uh, because why? Because you're going to seek the Lord in those times. You're going to seek God. I mean, if you don't, you're going to be you're going to be stubborn, right? And then we don't want stubborn because we know that's sin, right? It's idolatry. So we repent. We turn to God. We ask forgiveness. Those things that are not like Christ, we want burned out of our lives. You know, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. It says in verse 12, Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. And get, what's his floor? The earth belongs to him. The whole earth. It's his floor. He's going to purge his floor. He's, all mankind is going to stand before the Lord. We, we see this in Scripture. And it says, And gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And that fire right there is a lake of fire. And you don't want to be there. Because there's no getting out. Once in, it's forever, eternity. 
the way to escape that is through Christ. So let's look at Matthew chapter 13. I think there's more to shine the light on this. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Um, let's, let's first look at verses 24 to 30. Let's read that. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept... His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Let, lest while you gather up the tares you root up the wheat with them let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest I will say unto the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them into bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn now let's go continue on and let's get down to verse 36 let's go down to 36 Verse 36, same chapter. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that had sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be in the end of the world the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Wow. I mean, I just want you to think about that for a minute. Wow. So he's declaring before this ever happens what will happen at the end of the age. At the end of the age. Doesn't that prompt you to want to reach as many people as you can with the good news of the gospel? I mean, doesn't it make you want to reach people that don't know Jesus because, because you know what's in front of them? It should. You should love. You should love them enough to, to want to reach them, to turn them from this, this direction You know, verse 47 says, And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to, the sh they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. And there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. You know, again, so he gives you the, the parable of, you know, the wheat and the tares. And then he gives you a parable here about the fish, about a, a great net that's thrown into the sea. And, 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 you know, the example is a when they drew the net to the shore, they gathered the good, the good into vessels, and the and the bad they cast away. And this is what's going to happen: the angels are going to come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and they're going to cast, and they're going to cast the wicked, right? 
and shall cast into the furnace of fire. They're going to cast them into the furnace of fire. And there's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's agony, you know, pain and misery. This is what God tells us ahead of time is going to happen to those that reject God, that are stubborn, rebellious, and, and feel that they don't want to follow God. They want to just live this life. They want to have their own way, do their own thing, live their own way, by their own moral, their own standard, totally neglecting the standard of the Word of God, which is an eternal standard. It doesn't change ever, not ever. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't need to be culturally reimagined. It is the Word of God. It is eternal. It is unchanging. God does not lie. This is what will happen. And so the question is, you know, first of all, what do you do with that? You know, that's the first question. What do you do with that? Do you know Jesus? Are you living for him? Are you being stubborn and rebellious? Are you going to follow Christ? And if you are following Jesus Christ, thanks be to God, you're going to be, you're going to be fine. You'll be just fine. Here it says... You know, um, this is this is good news for you because he says uh, that you be the, you know you're just in Christ, you're justified in Christ, right? So he's your righteousness. Jesus is. You have an obligation to live for him. So you can't just go do your own thing after you come to Christ. Oh, I have Christ now. I'm going to go do what I want to do. No, 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 no. It does not work like that. You got to follow him. Take up your cross and follow him, just like he said to do. But those that don't know Jesus, God classifies them as the wicked. Those that re reject and refuse Christ. It says back in Psalm 119, verse 119, Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross, like refuse. Therefore I love thy testimonies. Thanks be to God that iniquity and sin has an end. Rebellion has an end. Thanks be to God. Lawlessness has an end. God holds back wrath today. He's holding it back for the day of wrath. Now, some people think, well, you know, I don't think so much about that. I'm not, I'm not worried so much. Well, in the next verse in Psalm 119, verse 120, maybe this is more for you. So let's look at that. It says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Now that's Psalm 119, verse 120. My flesh trembleth. You know what that word trembleth means here in Hebrew? That word trembleth means that it makes your hair stand up in fear. My flesh trembleth for fear. And that word fear means dread, fear, or terror. My flesh trembleth, my hair stands up in fear, for terror of thee, for fear of thee. And it says, I am afraid of thy judgments. That word afraid there means reverence. That you will reverence. I'm afraid, you know, I, I will reverence that afraid in that context is, is talking about reverence to judgments. Mm -hmm. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, for I'm afraid of thy judgments. You know it'd be good it'd be good for us to listen to that. Let's go to Daniel chapter ten. Daniel chapter ten and if you would go to verse, start at verse 8, let's go to verse 8. Well, actually, start at 7, get a big, better picture. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. And see, that's what, you know, fear of the Lord really does. Let's keep reading. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision 
and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me on my knees, and upon my palms and my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken the word unto me, I stood trembling. Listen, this fear that came, I mean, it came down. These other men that were with Daniel didn't see anything, but they were terrified. They took off running. They hid themselves. Daniel himself felt that there was no strength in him. And it, he says his comeliness was turned into him into, into corruption. It means any, any good, you know, because mankind prides himself on being good, right? So many people say, oh, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. But your goodness in the presence of a holy God turns into corruptness. We are absolutely corrupt outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Corrupt. And we stand in the presence of a holy God I can tell you right now, the reaction here was Daniel fell on his face. I mean, it says uh, he was in a deep sleep on his face. He passed out. And even when the angel, this angel of God came and, and set him on his knees and on the palms of his hands, Daniel was still, you know, when he, he finally stood up, he was trembling. He tells him in verse 12 not to fear. He said, fear not. But do you understand that, you know, fear of the Lord is a real thing? Let's look at some more examples. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, and if we look at verses 1 through 5, let's read that. Verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people who have unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah's reaction, he says, Woe is me, I am undone. finished Isaiah thought that that he was going to die that that was it this was a reaction right of Isaiah we see the reaction of Daniel we see the reaction of Isaiah let's go to Habakkuk Habakkuk now, you might need to get your uh, index there to find Habakkuk. We haven't been to Habakkuk in a while. You can call him Habakkuk. Amen. Turn in there now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You find Micah, then you find Nahum. You're going to find Habakkuk, chapter 3. Listen to this, verse 16. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up uh, unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Listen to the, I mean, the reaction. My belly trembled, my lips quivered, rottenness entered into my bones. You know, the again, our goodness is in the presence of a holy God, man. It's, we're corrupt, man. 
and uh, and it shows. It shows. Fear. Terror. You've seen it. There's more to look at. Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, look at verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Why are we working out our own salvation with fear and trembling? For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You see, this says in the, in the New Testament that we're supposed to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And we see the examples, we saw the examples with Daniel and Isaiah and Habakkuk, that, you know, we saw those examples, and now we see here in the New Testament it's telling us also to have fear and trembling in our walk, in our relationship there with God. It's not a carefree, la di da di da I can do what I want to do, Christianity. That's not it. You need to get into the Word of God. You need to obey His voice. You've got to obey what He says here. Not, I'm not talking about some kind of external Bethel Redding garbage. You know, the Lord told me this and that and the other when it's not even scriptural. Hello. The Christians need to get back to the scriptures. Because then maybe they'll stop doing some of the crazy stuff that we're doing today. Like making Christian tarot cards. Christian Ouija boards. You know what that's called? Occultism. Witchcraft. God hates it. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, um, I think that we need to read this. I think we need to read this chapter because this chapter illustrates our point in the verse, Psalm 119, verse 120, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, for I am afraid of thy judgments. This chapter totally makes that point. So let's take a look at it. We're going to read the whole thing. Okay? So bear with me. Let's go. Wherefore, seeing we are also... We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds." Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And have ye forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children? My son, despise, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the, the father chasteneth not? For if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we have gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness." Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. 
looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or perform or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward when he would have inherited blessing he was rejected? For he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. For you are not come unto the mountain that might be touched and it burned with fire nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched a mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Isn't that and Moses? Exceedingly fear and quake. God, you know, in the presence of God. But you are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. It is important for you to obey the Lord. Amen. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. You see, we should never, never take and, and abuse our relationship with the Lord. You know, sin is something that we have to fight against. You know, we it says you have not, verse 4 says, you have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. So you haven't shed your blood striving against your own sin in your life. But we need to strive against sin in our life. We need to understand how, remember when the Lord was on Mount Sinai, and I mean, the people were terrified, right? I mean, thunders and quakes and, you know, everything. And this was on earth, right? Moses said he exceedingly feared and quaked. But we're coming to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. We're coming to the presence of the Lord. The church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to God the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect. I mean, we have, it's a higher relationship. We need to remember who we have a relationship with. It's God. We need to reverence God. We need to have godly fear. We need to remember that our God is a consuming fire. God loves you. But you need to understand that we don't, we don't act stubbornly. We don't commit this, the sin of rebellion, witchcraft. We're not out there doing our own thing. We, want, we need to submit our lives to God and do His will. Follow His word. Not what everybody else is doing. Because what everybody else is doing, well, we already know what's going to happen. Verse 119, we read that. Thou put us away all the wicked of the earth like dross. We already know if you do your own thing and you don't have Christ, you don't, you don't follow in the Lord, we already know that there is no hope in that situation. Well, the only hope is in Christ. You can't reject Him and live. You need to turn to Him to live. Revelation chapter 1.
Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, John speaking. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. John, who had a, had that close walk and relationship with the Lord Jesus, he fell at his feet as though dead, fell on his face. Not falling backwards like you see in a lot of these uh, uh, charismatic things and stuff like that. <laughs> when they fall backwards, it's judgment, you know? Judgment. You see, you see that when they came and trying to take Jesus um, from the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, they said, they came up there and, and uh, Jesus said, who do you see? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm he. And they, they fell back. You know, if he hadn't allowed them to to take him, these no man takes his life. His life, you know, you know, they had absolutely no, uh, no chance of taking Jesus unless he allowed it. He allowed it because he's fulfilling the Father's will. He went through all of that for us. You know, as Christians today, they don't want to go through things for the Lord. It's kind of weird. You know, the Lord went through all of that for us, and yet modern Christianity in America, at least. Um, doesn't want to have trouble, doesn't want to have tribulation, doesn't want to have chastisement, doesn't want to have the fear of the Lord. They just want everything is happy and everything is 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 only joy and there's no there's no trials and, and just all is good and they're just naming it and claiming it and blabbing it and grabbing it and uh, trying to, you know, that's coveting, right, by the way. Um, anyway, they're, they just want to do all of those things and, uh, you know, not experience any obedience to God just want to do their own thing and still have Jesus so they can make it into heaven of course well it doesn't work like that guys you need to take up your cross and follow him you need to obey his word if you belong to Jesus Christ you have an obligation to obey his word God is not mocked whatsoever a man sows that will he also be many of us many of us need to go to the Lord and repent of sin in our lives. That way we can walk with Him. Amen? Don't allow yourself the pride and arrogance to be lifted up in your heart to say, oh, I don't need to repent. If the first person that says, I don't need to repent, is the person that does, you absolutely do. Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. In so many ways we offend. In so many ways. Now, it's not to say that we live a defeated life because we don't. We don't. We have victory in Jesus. We have victory over sin. Sin does not lord it over us. It doesn't have dominion over us. But sin is a choice. You need to choose not to sin. Get into His Word. Let His Word strengthen you. Renew your mind according to His Word. Let his word be your grounding. You know, Jesus is our foundation, right? He is the cornerstone. He is he's our sure foundation. We, we go to Christ. You know, his word was given to us so that we would be able to, to know his will and to do it. Remember, our God is a consuming fire. He's also love. Amen. We have an obligation to remember the fear of the Lord. Back in uh, Psalm 119, verse 120, it says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. I am afraid of thy judgments. And so many people today are not fearing judgment. There is a coming judgment where God will judge all mankind. So it doesn't matter what, you know, what you are uh, deceiving yourself with today, thinking that you can do your own thing, this and that, do, you will stand before the Lord. The Bible tells us every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee. It's yours too. If you're living in rebellion against God, your knee will bow. My knee will bow. Every knee. 
And God is absolutely just in all of his judgments. And if you face judgment without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be lost. The only way to avoid that judgment, the only way to avoid the wrath of God is to be in Christ. So there we are. That is the two scriptures we have for tonight. Amen. And, uh, well, praise the Lord. Pray for um, one another. Pray for those that don't know Christ. Pray that they'll come to know Him. You know, a life lived for Jesus Christ means everything. And a life that's lived without Christ, well, you lose everything. So, Today, tonight, if you don't know Jesus, turn to him tonight. Don't put it off. If you've been running from him, turn around. Go home. Go right back to Christ tonight. Don't wait. Don't wait till tomorrow. You may not get tomorrow. Go to him tonight. And those of you that are living for Christ and, and uh, dying to self, taking up your cross and following him, obeying his word, well, keep doing that. And get the gospel out to as many people as you can while you can. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. Amen. Love them enough to tell them the truth. Stand for Christ. Don't compromise. Love you guys. Pray that you have a blessed night. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, for the Encouraging Word broadcast. God bless you. Have a blessed night in Jesus.